There is no doubt sustainability has now become a key topic to most companies out there. And within the telecoms industry, the need to innovate, reduce energy consumption and related costs appears to be among the top priorities for ecosystem players. Sustainability is also at the heart of Juniper Networks' solution called Cloud Metro, which the company introduced last year. To learn more about it, I'm now delighted to speak with Irene Zhang, Director of Product, Marketing, Cloud Metro and Security at Juniper Networks. Hi, Irene. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So you talk about Cloud Metro as a new approach to re-architecting traditional metro networks. What exactly is new about the Cloud Metro? Sure. So when we think about metro network, it's essentially the um, the network domain where it's called access and navigation, right? And so historically, that part of the network, uh, whether you call it traditional metro or uh, retro metro, is uh, the function is very simple. It used to aggregate the traffic from the SS network and then pass it to provider edge and the core to, um, and essentially it's just aggregate the traffic and passing it through. There's nothing super complicated. Now with Cloud Metro, fundamentally, it is about applying cloud principles to re-architecting, building, and operating the Metro network. So what is new is that first, the cloud principle for re-architecting. So instead of um, a, a scale-out approach, we use the, the cloud spine and leaf principles to, to have it not only scale up, but also scale out with the IP services fabric architecture design. And for building the system that build the cloud metro network, that those systems have sustainability built from day one. And um, it's, it allows you to support slicing. It allows you to be energy efficient, space efficient. And last but not least, on operations, Traditional metro are very much uh, menu intensive, menu operations. And with cloud metro, the operations are primarily cloud delivered operations, having the automation delivered from the cloud as SaaS service. And why is sustainability in metro networks important? And why should it be on top of mind for operators? Absolutely. So for operators that, um, the industry standard body have already start having different standards to require operators to commit to um, reducing their carbon emissions. ITU have it required to reduce 45% by 2030. Um, GSMA have uh, most operators commit to net zero by 2050. If we think about it, that's a lot. And um, the, the truth is, majority of the carbon emission for telcos are from the scope two and scope three. And then when we look at the different parts of the network, um, the metro network is where uh, most of the innovations are coming for the next decade. The metro network we talk about, this is where it's, it's essentially, it's not coincidence where it's the metropolitan area network that is close to population. And so this is where the edge cloud hosting the connectivity and service experience converge. And what I mean by that, the, the places that people are moving their workload to edge computing. And while there's a spectrum of location that you can host the edge compute, the, for operators, the best location will be within Metro where they have those central offices, pre-aggregation site, because it's close to population. So it's still having the benefit of low latency. And at the same time, it's large enough so you can do resource pooling and have the business case. So now as the traffic are going, a lot of them going to the Metro and from um, some podcast, uh, forecasts, we know that it's gonna get from uh, 2021 to 2027, over 500% increase. Since sustainability, the greenhouse emission is directly related to the amount of traffic travels to the network for operators that want to really improve their sustainability, the metro network will be a key place that they have to improve. That's a great point you're making there. So how does Cloud Metro achieve better sustainability when compared to a retro metro network? 
So when we think about improving sustainability, we can think about it for、uh, a couple aspects. There's the power or energy efficiency. There's the space efficiency, and also the longevity to reduce e-waste. So let's look at one by one.、Um, so first, on the energy efficiency, as I mentioned, for cloud metro systems, they are、um, when we build the systems, we already have the sustainability, the built-in, and so a couple specific features. One is、um, they have the the adaptive power innovation. Where think about it like a smart home where you install smart thermostat, right? What does that help you? It helps you turn off the fixtures and other appliances at home when you're not using it, and that way it allows you to intelligently save power, right? And we apply similar logic that in our cloud metro systems, where when you're not using certain functions, when you're not using certain packet forwarding engines. There are specific software written in the system that allow you to automatically turn them off, and that allow you to save power. And another thing is the、um, we decouple the power power shelf in the chassis. So historically, when you use some big chassis, the power shelf is attached to the chassis, which、um, when you need more power, then you might need to replace the entire chassis and also the power supply. So when thinking about Power. Let's say you connect to a power grid. There's always a conversion loss when you、uh, how much power you draw from the grid is not a hundred percent to the power that you can use for the system. There's always some some loss. And the efficiency is how you can minimize the loss. Is that you can get、um, over ninety percent of the power, or is it ninety two, ninety five? And we are super proud that our Cloud Metro are able to get certified to titanium, which is the highest grade. That the the min the minimum loss that you you would get from the、um, the power conversion. So all of this allow us to save customers at least over fifty, actually over fifty to seventy percent power saving. So that's the first part on the power efficiency. On the space efficiency, that is where let's say you you use the routers and you need to deliver certain traffic. And those are physical equipment that sit on certain space. And what if you can deliver a same amount of traffic or even higher, but with smaller footprint? That is where what we do that we look at it. We look at the system design, and we consolidate layers and consolidate components, and use the latest generation chipset. And in fact, even have the fabric to allow for future chipset, so that you will. You will use the same, like much smaller device, and able to accomplish more. So that allow you to use less space、um, in the facility. And last but not least, the longevity. So typically, a retro metro device,、um, the life cycle would be three to five years. And with、um, cloud metro, the system that you you get that、um, because of the Innovation with the chipset, because of the innovation that we decouple the power shelf, as well as the fabric capacity that allow for future generation of chipsets. So that extend the lifetime from three to five years to seven to twelve years. That's over double of the lifetime, and that really helps reduce the e waste. So you've talked about the power saving role, but what role does automation play in improving sustainability in a metro network? I'm glad you asked. So, for automation, the way we see it is first, when、uh, with automation, you can automate tasks such as onboarding, service assurance, capacity planning, things like that. And how does that relate to sustainability? Well, first, when it comes to configuration, permissioning, onboarding, and service assurance, typically、um, or historically, you would need to send your technician to the field, which Which would be basically the truck row, and by automating this task, that allow you to reduce the amount of truck rows required, and that has direct impact and direct reduction for、uh, any telco's carbon footprint. Secondly, is that when it comes to sustainability, the way we see is not only、um, the 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 energy or the the green, but also the sustainability for the people. 
and the business. So with automation、um, and AI ops, it allows people to be able to accomplish more with the same resources. We talk about metro networks are gonna grow fivefold、um, in the next five years, and chances are that the any telco are not gonna have five times more people to do it. Which means, and chances are they are gonna have the same team of people, and how to make sure that. Empower them to accomplish so much more without burning out, and having giving them a good work-life balance. That is where automation comes in, and that is where AI ops can really make a difference. So surely, it sounds like there are a lot of ways that telcos can actually become more sustainable. Thank you very much for your insights with us, Irene. You're welcome. 